So many of you probably already know that I'm really into physical media, like DVDs, VHS, Laserdisc, 8-track, vinyl, and of course, cassette tapes. I'm very passionate about them. They've been one of my favorite things to collect for years, and I just, it's one of my favorite formats. So and if you read the title of this video, you already know that we're going to be talking about mixtapes specifically. I'm going to also use this as an excuse to talk about one of my most cherished cassette tapes. So it's called Slave to the Metal, and it's one of those kind of cheesy compilations or professional mixes. I credit this tape for even helping define a lot of the music taste that I have today. So when I found it, I was familiar with some of the bands on here already, so that was part of why I bought it. Like, I already knew Twisted Sister, I knew Wasp, I knew Scorpions, uh, I knew Judas Priest, but it was the first time that I ever started, like, actually getting into Accept, and it was the first time I ever heard Striper. I'm not really a Striper fan, but I can still appreciate them. It was the first time I ever heard Rock and Roll Children by Dio. I had listened to Dio already, but I had never listened to anything from the Sacred Heart album. It was also the first time I ever heard Yngwie Malmsteen, Helix, and Queensryche. I bought it when I was maybe in about like middle school or early high school. And at the time, you know, I didn't get allowance. I didn't have a job. Um, so whatever money I had was really sparse. So CDs, which was kind of the main way to listen to music at the time, especially since I didn't have an iPod or MP3 player, was just kind of out. Like, I couldn't be spending $15 to $20 on a CD every time I wanted to listen to music. So really, sometimes I would burn myself CDs, but that was about it. Uh, so cassette tapes became one of the best ways for me to actually listen to music growing up, and that's how I discovered a lot of my favorite bands. It's gotten a little bit harder to actually be able to find uh, cassette players and cassettes at thrift stores now, which is really unfortunate, because that's exactly how it started out for me, and it was just because it was affordable. So I'd usually be able to run into the thrift store really fast while my mom would be dropping stuff off, or if we were running errands or anything like that, or I'd just ride my bike over there. And I was able to usually find cassette players for not very expensive. Uh, I would usually be able to find like kind of a Walkman or handheld for maybe like $3, and then the cassette tapes were usually 25 cents each, so I would pick out albums that either looked cool to me or maybe if I recognized the band name, even if I wasn't very familiar with them. So the first time I ever listened to a lot of these different bands was because I found them on cassette at the thrift store, and it was just cheap and I could listen to it. It's good to note that, like, I had to do a lot of sifting through things because most of the stuff you would find was, like, Mormon Tabernacle Choir or very old country music. And, you know, just kind of stuff that most people aren't very interested in. Kind of the usual music that you would find at a thrift store. But I would go so frequently that I was able to find a lot of really good ones too. Uh, it was the first time I ever bought Depeche Mode Violator. Uh, it was the way that I found Billy Idol's Rebel Yell and obviously the Slave to Metal tape. So that's partially why I have a little bit of a soft spot for cassette tapes, is it's like, it's just kind of how I started listening to music for a long time, and I discovered so much great stuff that way. So I've always had interest in making mixtapes like I mentioned earlier, you know, I used to make a bunch of burn CDs when I was younger. And now that I have a pretty good dual cassette deck, I've been making some mixtapes for my younger brother, who's kind of following in my footsteps. He's, he's getting really into cassette tapes now, which is pretty cool. So this is one of my first attempts. It didn't turn out that great, mostly because the tape itself wasn't a good quality. It started crinkling near the end and tearing apart, which wasn't very good. And the actual recording length of the tape wasn't very accurate to what it said on the packaging. So and then this was my more successful attempt, or at least a copy of it. I made this one for my brother and I liked it enough that I really wanted it myself, so this is actually a copy of the first one that I made. As for the cosmetics of it, I actually spray painted this one black and then added some red spray paint after, and then drew the thrash mix inside A side B with Sharpie, and then added the white lining with pen afterwards and clear coated it. So it's good to note that when I spray painted it, I avoided the bottom of the tape. And I also left it on the lead, which is this clear tape here rather than the actual tape. So it's reeled all the way in. This is just the clear plastic piece before it actually is able to record. So for actually recording the mixtapes, this is what I've been using. They're newer Blink tapes and one of the better quality ones that I've found so far. I found these at Fred Meyer's, which is kind of a grocery and department store in my area. I know you can find them in other places like Walmart. If not, you know, there's always online. Now this is what it looks like outside of the packaging. You definitely don't have to make it look as fancy as I do. You could just leave it unpainted and then write your track listings on there. 
Now for actually recording it, I usually reel it so that it's about halfway through the lead. Otherwise you might miss the intro of your song because it's not actually recordable until it gets to that dark part. So all cassette decks are gonna be a little bit different. On ours, the record is on this side. That's how most of them will be if it's a dual cassette deck like this one. So for recording, we are gonna put it on this second half. Usually for playing, you'll put it in on this side. Again, just make sure the actual tape is showing up and that it's not on the lead anymore before you put it in so that you don't record over any dead space. So and right now on ours, you can see that it's set to tape, which is actually not what we want because that would be more for like if we're listening to a cassette tape on here rather than recording one on here. So we're going to switch that to CD on ours just because that's what we have the aux cable connected to. If we were going to be real old school about it, you would take out the cassette or play the radio that you would be recording from and then throw that in here, and then record from there to here. You can use really anything, whether it's your phone or an MP3 player, an iPod, CD player, really anything. For ease, we're gonna use this. It's a modern Sony Walkman. It runs on Android, and I'm using the music app PowerAmp. The reason I'm gonna use this instead of my phone is just because this way I don't have any notifications or anything like that that might come up and interrupt the recording. And since the Sony Walkman uses USB-C, we're going to go ahead and throw on this adapter. So and even though the packaging on the blank tape said it was 90 minutes, I did discover that these specific tapes are more like 47 minutes on each side. So I made these playlists ahead of time. As you can see on PowerAmp, it does tell you exactly how long all of the songs in your playlist are, which is really helpful for this. So this one is 47 minutes long, and the side 2 or side B on this is just a little bit under that, so there will be some dead space at the end, but that's okay. So we're going to actually want to check to make sure the volume's at a good level before we actually start recording the tape. That way it's not too quiet on the tape or not too loud. So as we can see here, it's definitely too loud. We want it to barely be reaching those red points. So we're going to go ahead and turn it down on the Walkman. And then once it's hitting about right there, that looks like what we want. It's also good to note that each song could have a different volume level, so it's good to keep an eye on it as you're recording. So now that we have the volume set, the tape set, and our playlist created, we can go ahead and actually start the recording. On this tape deck and a lot of others, how you start the actual recording is you hit record and then play. And then we'll hit play on our playlist. I'll just set that to the side there and wait while it continues going and kind of monitor it for each song just to make sure the volume level doesn't get too quiet or too loud. All right, so now that it's finished, we're gonna go ahead and listen to the beginning of the tape and the end of the tape just to make sure it doesn't cut off anywhere and that it ends and begins where it should. But first, we're gonna have to make sure we rewind this whole tape since the other side is still blank. All right, so now, moment of truth. Well, it sounds like the beginning is good, and normally I'll sit and listen through the whole tape just to make sure that there's no issues, that everything sounds good, all the volume levels are good, nothing sounds like bad quality. But for the sake of this video, we're just gonna go ahead and fast forward all the way to the end and just make sure it doesn't get cut off and it ends where it's supposed to. All right, sounds like it ended off at a pretty good point. Didn't even really have any dead space at the end. And then again, for this side, we're gonna make sure it's about where the lead ends. All right, so we'll get our playlist ready to set up the recording for the B side. All right, so again, on this side, we're gonna go ahead and hit record and then play. And then once that starts going, we'll start our playlist. And then we'll basically do the same thing that we did with the first side, just make sure it records all the way through once it's done, listen to it, make sure all the quality is good, and that none of the songs get cut off. So this next part's going to be completely optional. You don't have to spray paint a cassette tape. You could do whatever you want with it. You could sharpie it, you could just put paper on it, whatever you want to do. You could just leave it plain if you want to. Personally, I like spray painting them because I think it's more time efficient and I think there's a lot more you can do with it creativity-wise. 
So far out of all the tapes I've made, I haven't really had any issues sound wise or with the paint ruining any of it, but I'll kind of show you my process as to at least how I do it. So I've got my tarp laid out here and some spray paints. I'm not too picky about what kind of spray paint I use. So I'm using paint that I already have that I found in my garage. And one of the ones that I found is this car touch up paint. It's a metallic silver, which I think will work pretty well for a traditional metal tape. And then before I actually start painting, I make sure it's all the way wound so that it's on the lead right here, like I mentioned earlier. That way, if any paint residue does get on it, it doesn't hinder any of the sound quality. When spraying the tape, I try to spray it all evenly and get the sides, except for the very bottom of the tape where the lead is. I decided to go with the Iron Maiden font for writing on the tapes. And we're gonna keep it simple and just call it the Heavy Metal Mix. This part doesn't have to look perfect since it is just the outline. We're gonna go over it afterwards and then make it all in bold. So now it's gonna start to actually look like the Iron Maiden font. It doesn't need to look perfect, but I'm gonna still try and get it to look pretty close. And honestly, I wasn't gonna use the Iron Maiden font because it seemed a little too cheesy, but I just saw them recently, so it's got me in the mood. Another side note, make sure you don't forget to add a side A and B or one and two on your tape. Looks pretty good, now we can go ahead and add the white pen. I don't really use any specific brand, I just use any white gel pen I can find. Since it is a gel pen, it will smear, so you do have to look out for that. The clear coat should take care of that though. And then you're gonna to wanna to do a clear coat when you're done with all the other painting and writing on it, anything that you decide to do, uh, just so that it helps protect it. I'm using this Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Coat. It's worked on my other tapes pretty well, so I just kind of stick with it. And then personally, I like making a cool looking J card for it. And then if you're not familiar with what a J card is, it's basically the cassette sleeve. So this piece right here with the cover, the spine, and the track listing. You could draw yours yourself or do it however you want. I'm gonna go ahead and do mine in Photoshop. I just went ahead and stole this photo off Google and then imported it into Photoshop. And then I'm gonna go ahead and change the size so that it's gonna be the same as your average cassette cover, which is gonna be two and a half by four inches. And then once we've got that all set, we're going to go ahead and add the spine, which is another half inch. Going to throw on the title, Heavy Metal Mix, and I'm going to use the font Bavarian Outline. Since the outline doesn't show up very well on the cover, we're going to go ahead and fill that in real quick. Then I'm going to go ahead and use the same font for the spine. And this piece is usually where the track listing will be, but since I have a rather large track listing, we're gonna go ahead and just add an extra panel for that and leave this one blank. The track listing panel, I'm just gonna make the same size as the cover, so four by two and a half inches. And then we'll go ahead and add the track listing. So now that we've got it printed, we'll go ahead and cut it out and then fold it to fit in the case. So to cut it for the case that I'm gonna put it in, we're gonna go ahead and fold it here, here, and here. So now we can go ahead and put all the pieces together. We'll throw the J card in the case, and then the tape should fit snug in there as well. And now it's complete.